Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Amit Sharma, and I'm back with another session of DGJF Sambhag, the Jewelers Talk Show, an interactive program by Informal Markets and Swear the Voice of Jewelers. And today we have with us the amazing personality of our gems and jewelry industry, Mr. Jen Tiranaga, CEO of Pure Jewels London. Hello, Ms. Jen. I welcome you today at DJF Sunbad, a podcast series. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you very much. And uh, thanks for uh, inviting me to participate on, on this uh, podcast. Right. Ms. Jen, I would like to know from you, Pure Jewels is a renowned international jewelry brand. What are the values that drive the brand to date? Well, it's very kind of you to say that uh, it's a renowned international jewelry brand. Um, we're a, we we look we consider ourselves to be a heritage brand. So I'm a ninth generation jeweler, wow. and um, and it's something. And our roots and our heritage is something that uh, certainly I'm very proud of. And it's become at the very center of of our brand narrative. And if I was to sum up what Pure Jewels celebrates as a company, it would be a, a, we, we celebrate the idea of journeys. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if we are to chart the journey of my grandfather, who founded the company in Nairobi in 1950, then oh. it's the journey of, uh, you know, it's a, it's a journey of, of looking forward to new ventures, looking forward to, to a new life. You know, he jumped on a ship in the 1930s with his friends to go to East Africa, to Nairobi. Oh. And uh, he landed there with his uh, skills of making jewelry. Mm-hmm. And uh, he catered to the local community there. And in 1950, he set up his uh, first workshop. And uh, we came to England in, in 1975. So the Pure Jewel story is very much about journeys. All right. Fantastic. Uh, you've been a tech savvy person, uh, making the best use of technology. Uh, I would like to understand how you grow your business online within a short time. Like, how do you plan further to take your business online? Sure. So I can tell you it it hasn't happened in a short time. It's something which takes uh, quite a long time to build a brand. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember, you know, a few anecdotes uh, in my early days. I've grown up in a workshop environment. I've seen my dad, my grandfather, my uncles work you know, in a, in a workshop environment. And uh, I've seen the craftsmanship firsthand. So you can say the blood. So it was very interesting that, uh, you know, my grandfather, although he loved the fact that I had so much passion and interest in making and and the craft that goes into our industry, Mm -hmm. what he really emphasized on was the need for education. Mm -hmm. And he always said, uh, you know, better you have to uh, go and uh, study, you have to get a degree. And you have to get experience, you know, in other industries so that you can bring new practices into this industry as well. And that's exactly what I did. I trained as an economist. Okay. I worked in investment banking for a while. So I learned a lot of operational skills. I learned a lot of skills that that I did not know at the time would become useful for me uh, in the in moving the business forward. But mm-hmm. certainly, you know, these these became additional ingredients uh, which which helped uh, build an operational sense you know because e-commerce is not easy um, and to and to do e-commerce in the in with fine jewelry or, or to you know uh, put stories forward is is challenging it requires a completely different level of operational discipline mm-hmm. and you know there are a lot of success stories out there but I can only understand how hard you know everyone works in in, in pushing their brand forward. Right. Now, as you just mentioned that you are the ninth generation um, for Pure Jewels, what is the edge, if I may ask you, like what gives you an upper edge when I compare it with any uh, new entity that comes into the picture and Pure Jewels? Like? So I'm a ninth generation jeweler because I come from a community, very proudly come from a community of, of jewelers. You know, I'm a Sony, you know, and I, I proudly wear the hat of, you know, saying that we are carigas, we are we are craftspeople, mm-hmm. you know, and it's it's something, it's a heritage which is really important. When you talk to me about sustainability, for instance, mm-hmm. okay, I'm not just talking about provenance and, and source of materials, but I'm also talking about sustainability of our craft. This is something which is very much at the core of what we're building as a as a as a company. Um, you know, the idea that uh, craftsmanship uh, needs to be preserved, otherwise time will forget it. This is, you know, really important. While I, I'm fascinated with new technologies which are coming in the industry, as far as 
you know, production is concerned, mass production, innovation in technology that pushing forward. We cannot forget our roots. We cannot forget where we're we're coming from as a as a as a jewelry industry. Mm-hmm. And for me, uh, promoting and creating sustainability in the very core of what makes our industry great, which is the craftsmanship, uh, is is something that uh, you know time should not forget. Let's put it that way. So this is very much at the center of what we do. And when you start talking about craftsmanship, you're talking about uh, effectively luxury. All right. If you look at the definition of luxury, luxury requires. Uh, a sense of heritage, which, you know, our industry has lots of, and, you know, certainly our company uh, certainly celebrates, but also you've got to combine that with craftsmanship and craftsmanship is not fast. It's, 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 it's a slow process Mm -hmm. and it requires care and it requires love and it requires a lot of passion, you know, when, when, when building craftsmanship. So, you know, how do you depict that from a technological point of view? How do you bring that forward and communicate that to uh, the end consumer? And Mm -hmm. technology is something which is an enabler to tell those stories. Exactly. And this is what I find absolutely fascinating that, you know, if you look at social media in the UK, we, we have TikTok and, and Instagram uh, and the whole of whole of Asia is very strong on Instagram. These yeah. are great platforms to tell some amazing stories and authentic stories, you know, of, uh, of where things come from. And the consumer needs to be educated. And at the end of the day, we have a choice as a, as a jewelry firm. We have a choice of doing one of two things. We're either selling discounts. Mm-hmm. Or we're selling, uh, you know, symbolisms, or okay. we're selling stories. And if you look at our brand story, the the story of you know aspiration, the story of looking forward to the unknown, the story of uh, of journeys itself. Mm-hmm. These are symbolisms that everyone can can relate to. Every human being can relate to. And imagine creating jewelry, and imagine creating design, and imagine challenging a whole new generation of uh, designers mm-hmm. and craftspeople to think about symbolisms in jewelry mm. and what new ideas can we bring forward? Which human being cannot connect with that? Because after all, we are humans. Uh, we all want to connect with each other. That is so true. You know? So uh, are you a Bollywood buff? Yeah, I'm, I'm very much, we, we, we're, we're, my wife, my kids and I, we are very much a Bollywood, uh, Bolly, yeah, very much a Bollywood family. Okay. Let's put it that way in terms of Bollywood fans. All right. So who's your who's your favorite actor? Um, I've quite a few favorite actors, and uh, I love the way Akshay Kumar is um, is con- continuously reviving himself, and you know, and and uh, picking up some really nice topics, mm-hmm. symbolic topics, uh, which. Um, which I think is is quite interesting, and uh, he's touched on uh, some some very nice topics. And I like actors who take on you know um, controversial topics and uh, really really deal with them. So I'm enjoying that era at the moment of Bollywood. Okay. Any any particular movie that you can watch ever again? Not one and only. I must say the favorite in our family and in our household is definitely the three idiots. And I think that's, that's something we've been watching quite a lot. And one of the reasons it appeals to me is, uh, is, uh, Amir Khan's, uh, you know, idea that, uh, you know, you've got to follow excellence. You've got to follow your passion and everything else will fall in place. And I think that story and that, that narrative is, is, uh, important. And, and I think that's what we should all focus on. Okay. So, uh, are you, are you also a foodie? Well, you can tell I am, and uh, I absolutely love love food. Um, I, I sometimes threaten to cook, but uh, my wife is the uh, is is the is the is the is the real chef of the family. But yeah, I, but absolutely from from all the sort of uh, fast food, uh, you know, stalls in Bombay to you know, sometimes I get into trouble, but uh, it's it's worth it. So yeah, I, I enjoy all the the chatpatas that. Uh, Lovely, lovely, lovely. So, uh, if I, if you could share a meal with any four individuals, maybe living or dead at the moment, who would they would be? Um, I would, I would love to um, sit with the Queen. Okay, right. I think she is absolutely amazing. Uh, Paddington Bear very recently got that opportunity, uh-huh. and um, I think it would be really interesting to to understand, um, you know, what she likes and what she doesn't. Because again, you know, she's she's this one one person, one personality where, you know, who has been steadfast and and absolutely solid throughout her life, 
Mm-hmm. You know, not a not a single wrong turn from her side. So I admire her a lot. Okay. Um, in terms on the business world, I'd love to sit with Warren Buffet, yeah. and uh, he's a he's a very interesting uh, person, and he's. And he's someone that you know, irrespective of what's happening in the world of technology and all the bubbles that are coming and going, he's he's a very consistent person. So it would be mm-hmm. nice to get some insights from him. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, now I'll shift to the rapid fire round of our session, where uh, we're going to give you one word, and uh, you do not have any time to give a thought about it. And um, whatever comes to your mind, the first word you have to respond to that. So, uh, India. Inspiring. Pure jewels. Journeys. United Kingdom. Home. Role model. My ancestors. Uh, James Ranika. Need to get fit. Technology. Uh, the future. Trends. Trends. Um, uh, necessary and uh, not the be and end all. Okay. Secret. Not many. Life. Enjoy. Food. Love. Guilty pleasure. Humanity. Enjoying human interaction. Right. Inspiration. Everywhere. Dream for the future. To really help our industry move forward in a positive way and a sustainable way. All right. Uh, so we come to an end of this session, Ms. Jan. It was lovely talking to you and thank you so much for allotting us time today. Thank you for having me and uh, thank you everyone for listening. And um, I look forward to uh, seeing everyone soon. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for more such interactive sessions by eminent personality of the Jubilee industry. See you all soon. Goodbye.